Hi everybody. Do I have something for you today? As George Galloway says, fasten your seat belts. <laughs> Listen, it's about, first of all, you know that I have dealt with this issue before uh, because I am a translator and uh, sometimes I have told you before about different things that the actual translation of a word into another language, the official translation sometimes because of cultural resonances and so on does not carry the full meaning that he had in the original. Such word is the word patria, okay, which in Latin and in the Latin languages has a certain connotation. Now this word is translated sometimes as fatherland or motherland or homeland. But I would argue that none of those three actually carry the full meaning. Certainly not fatherland, although some countries may be more comfortable translating it as such. Uh, because fatherland, father is power, is looking at your nation as uh, in terms of power or being more powerful than others and so on. Motherland is much closer because his mother is a loving relationship that you have with the country you were born in. Homeland could be that, but it's a little bit dry. The, the, the meaning would be like home. Home like, you know, your home, your family, your relatives that place of safety and security that it should be, that place that you love, where you feel comfortable, is that, is that, it has that kind of um, uh, meaning. Perhaps a good translation would be just home, my home country. The, the meaning there is in home, something, okay. So in what I'm going to deal with today, I just want you to remember this because sometimes I will translate it as home or home country or sometimes uh, uh, just, just home according to the context in which it is said. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the Falklands Malvinas. This is an Argentinian talking about what is going on in the world, but he's, he's talking geopolitics and about the South, okay, so it's not uh, just about Argentina. You will find him extremely interesting. Um, but he keeps saying Malvinas, and Malvinas for them the word carries that connotation that it is part of the patria and so on. So I have translated it as Malvinas. The other terminology that he uses all the time is the Anglo-Saxons. In Spanish that has a connotation which does not carry in English. In English Anglo-Saxon is Anglo-Saxon, you know, it, it is <laughs> the people who inhabited these islands. <clears throat> but it is used more in the sense of the Anglos, you know, as, as people said, the Yankees, for example. So I have translated it as such because that is the intentionality of the word, the Anglos. He's continuously talking about the Anglo world, and that includes the Americans. But to say the English-speaking world does not carry that thing. So I am telling you, so I trans, I'm, I'm translating it as Anglos. And some of you, English or English-speaking, 
might find it in the word, in the sense that he uses it, a little bit unpleasant. But he always says that it's never about the people, it's about the powers, so the Anglo power. Um, okay, so um, don't be offended because. <laughs> All right, uh, what else do I have? Okay, <clears throat> that is by, by way of explanation. Okay, so this is two videos that I have found of a person who is uh, very important, very well known in Argentina, who is very much against the president, Millet, and, uh, but it's the way he talks, which is very straightforward. Sometimes, actually, um, you know, a little bit insulting, you could say, because he refers to him as a psycho and schizophrenic and all kinds of things. So, um, but he's going to explain what is happening, and, and, and that's the way he talks, okay? I am going to leave in the, the, ah, no, no, I can't because I don't think, I don't think uh, YouTube actually likes putting links. I'm going to try anyway. I'll put two links down below in the um, description for you to hear it if you want to in the original Spanish. Um, at least you will see the guy, what he looks like, and, and, and so on, and with the emphasis that he speaks. He speaks very, very fast, but... Okay, so uh, the reason I'm going to share this with you is just I was rather worried and disconcerted yesterday because I heard, I think it was in two or three places, different places, that and this has not been confirmed, I don't think, but that, that um, Russia, well, obviously, uh, you know what happened, that uh, Russia had called the ambassadors uh, of uh, the UK and the American ambassadors to tell them that if they continue bombing, you know, that uh, they would take repercussions and they would you know, and actually hitting them back, probably not in their own territory, but in some other bases that they might have, that that was not out of the question. Something like that. You 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 heard it, right? Um, so in two or three videos, I heard that they were actually considering hitting in retaliation for the UK... Uh, actions that they were considering three places I don't know whether they got this from but one was the Falklands another one was Gibraltar and another one was Cyprus and I said that's crazy that cannot be well obviously first of all these were um, they were reporting from some telegram <clears throat> uh, channels and things Obviously, this could could not be confirmed, but but apparently there was one British newspaper. They said, and they didn't give the name that actually carried that story too. So, anyway, but I thought, obviously, the Russians would not say if they're going to hit something, what they're going to hit. So where did they get this from? <clears throat> but in any case, I considered it important and worrying and uh, all that. I didn't think that Gibraltar would be a possibility being right there in Europe. I Cyprus I don't think but perhaps they have uh, something to do with the Middle East. I don't know what is happening there. So I, I thought that um, the Falklands thing could, if they were going to attack somewhere, um, 
could be within the realm of possibility. I hope not. I hope not. It was perhaps, I don't know. But anyway, because of that, I thought, well, perhaps um, there in Argentina, they've heard the same story and uh, perhaps people are talking about it or something, you know. So I went to these channels that I use. And anyway, I saw these two interviews with this guy, and his name is Santiago Cuneo. And I will put it down in the, uh, in the uh, description box, okay? Now, <laughs> he is at times actually funny, but uh, let, me, let me start. Um, in one of the questions referring to this report, to, to the fact that Russia and China might eventually come if there was a problem there in the Falklands that Russia and certainly Russia um, and, and China could come to the aid somehow whatever that aid might be of Argentina in this case um, would be within the realm of possibility and uh, he says um, The Russians and the Chinese, of course, uh, they know very well that there is oil in the Antarctica. And they're not going to tolerate, I don't think, a British nuclear base in the Malvinas. Now more than ever, China and Russia believe that the Malvinas are Argent belong to Argentina. Problem is with the Chilean people who are subject to this British colonial government that they have and behind our backs are the English pincers that are squeezing our Pat Patagonia with a base in the Malvinas. And the Chilean armed forces, they're nothing but, um, are, they're nothing other than scout boys, boy scouts, sorry. They're nothing but boy scouts for the British crown. If you look at the map, you might wonder, look, you see Brazil, which is huge, yeah? And then you see uh, the Spanish, uh, that was uh, Portuguese, yes, a Portuguese colony. And then you see all these other countries that speak Spanish. Well, initially, it wasn't like that. Initially, that South America had been divided into East and West, okay? But it was after independence and so on. Um, it was very much the English hand there that partitioned that area into many countries. Of course, Mexico was always an entity by itself, but Uruguay, for example, was part of Argentina. In other words, they started dividing, you know the rule, yeah? So, um, but also if you look at Chile, Chile is this odd country, you know, very narrow, but goes all the way. Well, that was also part of the you know, an English hand there. You have the Falklands here and you have Chile there who was always in partnership really with with uh, England. I'm going to say England and not Britain because I don't think the Wales have, uh, the Welsh have, have, have very much to say on this. Anyway, so... Um, and, of course, you see, the problem was that Portugal, Brazil being a Portuguese uh, colony, Portugal was always a partner to the English, as you know, yeah? And they were checking Spain there. So Portugal has always been very friendly to England. And so uh, they left Brazil as it was, and everything else they divided up into little units, which is obviously what they wanted to, they have been wanting to do with Russia. Okay, so the the um, interview starts. Um, 
he's this guy is rather an eccentric character. Okay, so um, about leadership, the interviewer says, "You're obviously not a person who follows or needs to be led." He says, "Look, um, I was one of the first to point out in this entire process of globalization." They had been talking about that. Um, that this globalization aim has ended and has ended up in the rubbish bin or the garbage can. There is no possibility of the world returning to what it was. The world is again a bipolar world. So basically we are moving, evolving from what it could have been they wanted to be what could have been but wasn't and isn't and to a moving towards a more balanced world in relations between nations which was that was crushed with this globalization project of theirs that in truth was hiding they were hiding under their Poncho, a project with the idea of a corporate supremacy um, over national states and national sovereign states. And they wanted to construct a global government, which they continue to try to build. But the world now definitely is divided into two, the world of the East and the Western European sector. Russia is no longer uh, is no longer uh, a part of that. There is no possibility now of this being so. What we now have is an Anglo-Western world still trying to impose their aims by means of threats, sanctions, the use of violence, and in terms also of censorship. Uh, overt and covert threats against their own populations. That's on one side. And on the other side, a sector that we could generally say could generally go by the term BRICS because, the, of course, there are many who are not in the BRICS but who do, who do not form part uh, of it but are there aligned in that orientation anyway who have definitely broken with the anglo with the Anglo West and take no part in that project which had been drawn up as a globalist project with the same arrogance that characterizes them of believing that they have power over the whole world. It is now clear that it is that, that is not the case and it is up to us in the south of the Americas to suffer these north-south relations once again, to be again the backyard of a colonist, colonialist project, anglophiled Freemasonry, <laughs> that is advancing, unfortunately, right now, with the help, with this schizophrenic person that we have <laughs> as a president today. So, I believe that the world has come to a new order, indeed, yes, it's a new order, but it's a new order that is not the one intended by the Anglophile corporations. The West is frankly defeated and in retreat, trying to sustain itself. Actually, Trump told, the, uh, told, told them the other day that the U.S. is in a checkmate situation and that they have to try to re-establish foundational basis in their own uh, of their project as a nation state because if this supra corporation model if this continues uh, they're going to disappear I, I haven't heard Trump saying that but um, and he says and I don't think he's wrong the interviewer says what you are saying is very serious. Do you think that we are or we are stepping into World War III? We said that four years ago. I said it, that we were in the, so to say, anteroom of it. But then, of course, with the pandemic, because 
the beginning of hostilities was with COVID. COVID was the beginning of the hostilities at a global level. They were obvious. The the uh, it was obvious then at the time. You can check my recordings during that time. I said very clearly at the time that after the pandemic, the hot wars would start, a political reorganization. This illness was a military operation and it was developed as a preparation for the start of hostilities. And then came the response. So what is our situation now? The interviewer says, because you see, we have the new American base now, um, Miss, Mrs. Richardson base from the US, which the President Millet has just allowed them to start constructing at the very, very bottom of Tierra del Fuego, there in the Patagonia, right at the very south. Um, so now there is a uh, an American base there. Uh, from the U.S. and also uh, in Colombia, in the Caribbean. How do you see? How do you see us? Are we sort of the ham between in, in the ham in the sandwich between the two? He says no. Latin America has a flagrant weakness in its territorial defense policies because it lacks the necessary military tools to be able to defend itself. The progressive stupidity of Latin America, the imbecility that was carried out in terms of this misconception about our national interest, uh, which are, they say, forward, uh, a forward-looking nation must defend. Uh, imagine, it led to that, all that nonsense, it led to the disarmament and the clumsy and idiotic theory of uh, pacifism, sort of like a hippie pacifism, like something from the 60s and 70s, that type of model, you know, flying the flags of love and singing kumbaya, and this is in the middle of a hostile world, a violent world, a nuclear world. And Latin America is in no position right now to defend itself. That's why we are in the situation we're in. The question, well, um, Europe is probably in the same way, kind of, uh, isn't it? Uh, you remember that pacifist Europe, that elegant Europe with good manners, um, and now culture and so on and now they ended up being warmongers uh, talking about going to war bombs getting ready for, for war no 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 Europe is obviously un very much unlike Latin America they are part of NATO and they all have absolutely all of them have armies with potential nuclear possibilities to defend its interests in some way. Latin America, on the other hand, has a proposal of this stupid pacifism, not real pacifism. It is obvious that you cannot live in peace if you can be invaded and violated. He uses the word, the other word, beginning with R. Uh, violated by forces foreign to your territory who without any effort of any kind because we are defenseless, we are naked and they can and they will abuse you and this is pure idiocy in our part and this is what Latin America has done except Brazil and except Chile which have carried out a long-term defense in their own interests. Perhaps to a certain extent, a limited extent, Venezuela, they were trying to. But uh, you know what happened, as usual. Um, they don't let us breathe. 
How about compulsory military service in Europe? There are countries like France and Sweden and Germany um, that are talking about conscription. Um, could this happen, something similar in Latin America? Huh. That's not worth it. <laughs> That's not worth a crap. That's still thinking in terms of, you know, analog TVs or radios with a tuner and uh, television sets with an aerial. That's stupid. That's, uh, as I said earlier, that's stupidity, idiocy, ignorance that have to do with countries that once were but no longer are. Some people remember better times. On the basis of American bases now in Ushuaia, that's that one at the very bottom, um, a new one, in Rio Negro, the current strengthening of the bases in the Malvinas by the British, which is going on right now, does this represent a growing threat in the southeastern Atlantic? Uh, because it's not only Argentina, is it? There is the also the Brazilian oil basin there, um, and uh, uh, in front of uh, Rio by Rio de Janeiro, there is also the question of fishing uh, in Chile, etc. You say that the Anglos, you say the Anglos, says the interviewer. I call them the Anglo Zionists because they go arm in arm always, don't they? They're both looking at this region with craving eyes, thinking of Antarctica, don't you think? Look, is the answer. I agree with you, but I never start in my, when I discuss politics, by disqualifying the enemy. Not because I'm a good person, which I am definitely not. I deal with them at the end, but not at the beginning of my exposition. This is what I mean. I am not going to accuse them of having long, terms of, uh, long term objectives, because that is what they should do if they can. The problem is us. The problem is not them. So. We don't have to start making absurd analysis of judging those who think that they have claims on our natural resources that, they, uh, that are ours, but we are not in a condition, that's the problem, we are not in a condition to defend ourselves because of our own clumsiness and idiocy. It is clear that the world is moving to a place where there might be perhaps scarcity of resources. And no one is going to help you, to allow you to have your resources as we have ours, just lying around without our using them or exploiting them. The best defense policy for Argentina is the intensive exploitation of our natural resources, industrialization with added value, uh, population growth and professional armed forces. Argentina will defend itself with additional population, which we very much need, uh, with which obviously we cannot continue with just 47 million inhabitants in such a huge country as ours, we should have more than 200, 200 million to establish a territorial policy of urban development that will allow Argentina to know that its territory is inviolable because people live here. Uh, not, um, not an Argentina just going around regretting and crying all over the place. That, oh my God, <laughs> that they crying, that they're all coming to take over our things, to take our things away. Of course they're going to come and take our things away because <laughs> who in their right mind 
can think otherwise in a world where resources from, from many countries are scarce. When we Argentinians are so stupid that we either give them away or not take care of them. So the first thing I disqualify is to disqualify others. No, so the first thing I disqualify is others that disqualified those people. Argentina has to have an aggressive policy of population growth, an aggressive immigration policy to quickly reach a stable and permanent population, as we had that immigration after the First and the Second World Wars. We can have an immigration post Third World War. Now, of course, how will this Third War end? Because if it ends in terms of uh, the traditional violence uh, after a war, that's one thing. But if it, ends, if it ends in a nuclear scenario, obviously that's something else. There will, I'm sure, be immigration from, to our country from Western European countries. There might be a wave also from the U.S. seeking to live in a land that is not at war, a land of peace and hopefully in time prosperity. Argentina needs to have its arms open to immigration. It must have aggressive policies of industrialization and technicalization, if such a word exists, of construction of an uh, an added value chain and afterwards obviously as someone say um, after that French revolution that it might be coming there will be those will be our better days I think our better days are yet to come but that is what we have to do this crisis is one but I think that after the crisis we will have a better future. I mean this, without this crisis, Argentina would have no chance. Both Russians and Chinese now obviously know obviously that there is oil in Antarctica and they won't tolerate a nuclear base in the Malvinas. Probably now more than ever, Russia and China believe that the Malvinas are actually Argentinian. And <clears throat> that Argentina wants to exercise sovereignty over its islands. You know, I was looking at the map, where exactly the Falklands are and so on, but you see that it's not only um, the Falklands that are there. Uh, there are many, many islands there. I don't know, it, they're the size of, they look like the size of rocks. They're called Shack Rock, Black Rock. They all belong to Britain more and more towards, uh, you know, f away from Argentina, more and more towards the South Atlantic and to the north. But there are so many. Um, the uh, Cape Rock, the Disappointment Rock, <laughs> the South jo uh, Georgia Island, the Clark Rocks, the Traverse Islands, the Candleman, Candleman, Candlemas, Sorry, Candlemas Islands, Saunders Islands, South Sun, South Sandwich Islands. To the north of those, much to the north, there is also the Tristan da Cunha group, which has a Portuguese name, but it belongs to the UK. And above these, on top, in the South Atlantic, all these, uh, St. Helena and the Accession, Accession Islands. So there is quite a few there that belong to the British. Um, anyway, he says, uh, we're beginning to find powerful partners for our sovereignty claims. And when a deranged madman, like the one that we have at the moment in government, announces that announces NATO bases in our territory, he is activating the idea that the BRICS, um, that we need a restructuring relationship with Argentina. 
that they might think that, that uh, they need a sort of a, a restructuring relationship with Argentina so that this does not happen. And they may give us a hand in reestablishment, in reestablishing our geopolitical relationship with the world. As regards Chile, well, Chile is a British factory, really, so it cannot be considered in any, in any way but that of an enemy of Argentina. No, it, uh, not its people, obviously. Not its people, because we are brothers, we are cousins, we are brothers, because we all came out from the same womb from Spain and the people didn't hear didn't have to pay the people don't have to pay the consequences of what their governments are doing we in Argentina we were also governed by Videla one of the uh, generals the dictatorship we were governed by Videla but the people themselves were never assassins Chile right now is subject to British colonial governments and behind our backs, as the English always do, are the English clamps squeezing our Patagonia with their base in the Malvinas on the one side and the Chilean armed forces on the other, which is nothing more than, they're nothing more than Boy Scouts of the British Crown. As regards Brazil, Brazil, although it has a friendly relationship with Argentina, they actually promoted their entry in the BRICS, which the present president, Millet, did away with. Um, but even though they have a, a good friendly relationship with us, Brazil nevertheless is currently receiving in its territory the British Navy aircraft heading towards the Malvinas. And Uruguay, my goodness, what's happening there with that government is absolutely and disgustingly pornographic and makes you vomit. <laughs> with that despicable being they have as president, who is an anglophile piece of crap serving the British. So, so right now Argentina finds itself poorly located. We have countries around us with borders with us who have interests with our enemies. Brazil is an odd case because it's BRICS and nevertheless has a relationship of logistic support to the British forces heading to the Malvinas. Probably it is the country that we could establish relations in Uruguay, we need that lackey, Poe, to leave Uruguayan politics and our Uruguayan brothers once again become our brothers and not that traitor government. <laughs> and that is going to happen in these year's elections, God willing, and all that uh, clownish Politics will come to an end. Politics that, among other things, allow that pond they call the Falklands, um, where they where trash is sent, promoting tourism in our islands. In the case of uh, Israel, it will be Israel will be another state when this is over, another state will be born, a state obviously linked somehow to a Palestinian state. Mm, I don't know. I don't think Israel will ever accept uh, a Palestinian state. I, I just don't think so. But anyway, he says uh, somehow to a Palestinian, a link to a Palestinian state that is going to, that is what, what is going to emerge. It is emerging. Many nations are demanding now uh, as an actual and real fact, and there is going and, and there is going to stop Israel being an aircraft carrier for the U.S. in the Middle East, and from there to for being in the Middle East to be an Israel of the Middle East. 
it is not hopefully it will not be led by the Zionist ultra-right of Netanyahu, but hopefully perhaps return to that vision of the prime minister who was assassinated by those assassins who was trying and he was trying to find peace with Palestine. Perhaps that genocidal arrogance of the Anglo-imperialism, let us remember that those maniacs have direct links with the English, but I think they're going to be busy keeping their own place. They have no operational capacity, possible connection. The truth is that after this third war, the interests of each nation are going to be centered on survival, each one in its own home. There will be no time to think about plunder except, of course, for the superpowers. And the superpowers are still very far, though they don't want to, but they're still very far from be becoming a club of crazy dudes with delirious plans. The people of the world are going to defend their own hearth the best way they can in a dark world, a gray world, with perhaps few resources and with a very tough post-war in economic matters that these pirates and delinquents brought to us all. If Argentina is intelligent and plays its cards right, it might be willing to accept immigration from all parts of the planet. It must be properly aligned in military terms and must begin the reconstru reconstruction of a patria that must be a federation, as I have continuously argued, because of its territorial extensity, like all other geographically big nations similar to ours, the US, Russia, Brazil, to just stand there and cry that other people are taking what is ours and that they shouldn't because it's ours, that doesn't take you anywhere. The history of humanity is clear. To defend what is yours, you must have the ability to be independent and make its own, your own decisions and be able to enforce them. And if we continue to go around crying and lamenting ourselves away. We have already failed. I'm not willing to fail. I am not going to fail. Let us remember that the delirious dream of a group of billionaire crazies, that dream that they have, is not the dream of the peoples of the world. We are not the assassins. The people of each nation are not the government they have to endure. Israel now suffers a bunch of crime, who must be tried, convicted, and in a Nuremberg trial on the massacre of Palestinians. In our case, right now, they're taking from, from us, they're taking lithium, drinking water, all the fishing. There is no stupid conspiracy theories here. These are facts. You can see them. They are simply doing, what they're simply doing is plundering us. And what to, we have to do is to be in a position to prevent it. Question, but what are we to do about our own indigenous ruling class, all corrupt, for the last 200 years, they've been with the Brits, fully in, fully in with the British project. They're all the same in most of our countries here. Perón once said, speaking of the traitor ruling classes, the cho I had the choice of killing them or letting the or letting pass uh, letting time pass. I chose time, and eighteen years later he said I was wrong. I should have got rid of all of them long ago. 
a government of occupation and liquidation of assets. That is what we have at the moment. It is auctioning our assets before the Argentinian people wake up and then they would act accordingly. And they come and talk about peace, sure, the peace of a cemetery. Peaceful because there is no one living there. Among a global crisis uh, called the Third World War, Argentina is simply listed as a populated territory ready to be looted. It has no prominence as a national state, it has no defense capability, and we are now witnessing a stage of being absolutely looted, right, left, and center, such that they don't even need to exercise violence because they have managed to place the power of the Argentinian government in the hands of colonial delegates who lend themselves to the bureaucracy of the state administration in order to validate institutional looting. We, Argentina, we are an unfinished project. Since our independence, our leaders have always betrayed us. They have always been sleeping with the enemy. We are Hispanics, Mediterranean, from Spain and Greece and Italy. We have our Hispanic roots well marked, but com combined with easily with our native peoples. They were not exterminated, they, we, they intermarried, and these together with different immigration cycles throughout our history at different stages, um, a rich and prosperous generation we were of a proud people who at some moment in history were actually managed by patriotic people that led the administration and governance of our nation. But they have been plundering us. Let me give you an example with the arrogance that they have done uh, uh, with which they did so. In the house, uh, the mansion that uh, Perón used to have, they bombed it and destroyed it completely, and they bombed it with aircraft where you could read, Christ lives. False flagging us, false flagging the nation. But it wasn't us, it was them, them. And you know what they did? They then told us that they were going to, with their classic arrogance, they were going to change our sandals for libraries. And they actually built a library. It's there, you can see it. But of course, all the symbolism, just to rub it in, of the Freemasonry with everything that is symbolic of them and the books at the very top because as you know they think that knowledge is only for the elected only the elected possess the knowledge so this is where we are so on the one hand we have the chosen, on the other hand we have the elect, who would rule the world, birds of a feather. These are <laughs> creamy and assassins. They did not tolerate the people electing their own leaders, building a homeland for themselves. We were trying to build our nation, but continuously uh, interruptions, coup d'etat, uh, which obviously under their, under their poncho brought the financing of the Anglo world. It was difficult for them until, uh, it, at, at first it was difficult for them until the Malvinas, 
Malvinas was not a war, it was a battle in 1982. And the war goes on. When politic fails, they resort to war. It's either the force of reason that we have to choose, either the force of reason or a reason for force. And these terms, uh, we've, in these terms we fought a battle that resulted in the determined actions of the Anglo world to deal with us that led the founda to the foundations and consequences of what has been happening in Argentina from 1982 onwards. You remember that promise of President Alphonse Singh. He said that they were bringing us democracy and he told us it was rather a clumsy promise. He said, democracy, within a democracy, you eat, you heal, and you educate. And in this way, and with these nice words, surrendered Argentina and subjugated it to the precarious state of a little village without any vocation to be a homeland. And so from then on, we embarked on the path of resignation, giving up and giving in, led by a political class, and I say class with absolute contempt, that's what I feel for them. <laughs> but even then, there were, there were at the time many men and women who, that had lived in previous times uh, before that and they remembered and they remember still anyway we we are we are on this path of deterioration and then came that is when it started and then uh, it came the there came the trivialization of the 90s failure in our cultural battle and all that produce and all that produce this effect on the Argentinian being, uh, an effect on our DNA, and we began to lose our identity. And when a nation loses its identity, one loses the reasons to fight. And if you don't understand what it is that you're fighting for, you leave the fight. So today, when it is much more it is much more difficult to explain why uh, one must fight one must fight back we have to reduce the explanation to reasons in much more simpler words a more mundane explanation if you will what i mean is explain it simply to the people to be able to attract others to our cause. Because if you go deeper into philosophical argumentations and political theories, people are not going to listen to you. They have no time. People are hungry, thirsty for justice. They need shelter. They need health. And no one who has needs which hurt you like a personal pain in your own body or that of your children. No one in that situation has time to listen to us, giving them a history lesson. Nor should we have or dawn arrogance, the pretension that they should listen to our philosophical argumentations because they do not have time. They have to make sure that their children are being fed. Those of you listening to me right now, you and I have the possibility to sleep at night on a bed and to eat. And nowadays, that, that is almost a privilege that many of our compatriots today do not have. That is why we cannot expect the poorest to be engaged in this struggle. It is our responsibility to do it ourselves, those of us who feel we have a commitment 
at least we have more choices. And let us avoid just talking to ourselves and ignoring all others, lest we become a sect, and that is something that we do not want to become. We have to open our arms to those who think differently and make room for them, and that's the way to build a gigantic majority. Argentina was being built during Perón, but did not achieve victory. Again and again, our reconstruction project was interrupted. Argentina is an unfinished building, a work under construction, full of lime and sand and discarded timber. Our problem is that they never let us finish the building. They are those who say the only solution is to dynamite the whole building and start all over again because a lot of time has passed, it is old, and it is probably more expensive to remodel it than to start anew. And then we hear those same, those same versions, of the, the, all those versions of those from the ruling classes who were the ones who prevented us from finishing the project in the first place, telling us that the patria, our home, is dead, finished. And then they even move on to draft the autopsy, autopsy report of our homeland. <coughs> Argentina is not dead. It is in intensive care, point four, under a reserved or guarded prognosis. That is why we cannot commit the clumsiness of arrogance of wanting to talk to ourselves, to applaud ourselves, but rather to go out there and persuade those who have to be persuaded to join our ranks. To build our home, defend our home, which will be the roof and shelter for their children, because we are living at the moment with people who are in this country live in this country, but have no patria. They have no sense of home. We live in the same geographical space with these uh, ruling classes. We have all been born in the same geographical space, and we have all been given the same documents. But some of us are patriots and feel for our home. The others are inhabitants without patria, without a home, without identity, without a flag, flag that they love. And all they do is to swarm around and get hold of the benefits, the profits, the advantages of uh, plundering the place they were born in. This government that we have at the moment is an occupation government. It cannot continue to govern. We must ask for the impeachment trial. You have the forms there for you to sign. Please give them for people to sign them. Um, to sign this, uh, bringing down this national government with Millet all those plunderers. The desperation of people whose patience is now is now running out. As Peron said, when people finally lose their patience, thunderbolts are sure to come. <clears throat> <coughs> the anger is there, waking up. And these traitor leaders are finding it more and more difficult to sustain their lies. However, the people right now will be moved more by perceptions than by conviction, because we have no time to convince. Events happen naturally. It does not wait. They don't wait necessarily for a leader to come up. They just occur. Be prepared for moments of tension, disorder, because 
when they stole our time, they also stole our being able to organize. When people do not have time to go to a neighborhood meeting, a political association, their children's school meeting, their firefighters, assembly, whatever it might be, when people withdraw from social participation because they need to eat, the most primary sense of their subsistence, social cohesion then has been destroyed. And that's what's happening today. But with the same force that social cohesion decomposes, there comes also a rebound of social anger. Let me put it this way. The harder you put your foot on a spring, the harder, the more violent it comes back to you. And our society is being crushed. But Argentina is such a spring so that they are putting undue pressure on something that sooner or later is going to release its force to return it to its proper place. The gray middle class, I call it gray. Gray because it is a class that does not participate, a gray class that does not demand that tolerates whatever it is thrown at it, sometimes even laughing in their face. It's grey, it has not been able to fight or willing to fight to protect its rights, to protect its identity. But the rulers, if should they not see these grey class awakening at the moment? If they, and if they see it but continue ignoring it, then they will have to go through a French Revolution. So the inevitable outbreak will not be will not be that that we use in 2001. If you remember the phrase, the slogan in 2001, if you remember, was all out, all the politicians, all out. The phrase now will be no one stays. So who is going to govern us? I am asking Argentinians to stop looking into and stirring up garbage cans. That means stop looking for family for familiar faces, names that you know, names on television, whatever, to set up future governments. They are just recycling rubbish. What we need is red-blooded Argentinians who are at home and decide to come up to stand to protect our home. And when I say new people, I don't mean that they have to be young. It is, this is not what I mean. In politics, new means one who has never actively participated. Age here does not matter. We need millions to start assuming responsibilities. Professionals, accountants, lawyers, people in trade, carpenters, greengrocers, yes. My, fa my, fa my father was a grocer. He goes on for a long time talking about how his father made it. Anyway, okay, so um, we are under a murderous and criminal occupation government which is destroying the assets of the Argentinian workers. Those who see themselves as middle class? You're kidding. They have ceased to be so a long time ago. We need action now. You know, while we are talking here, there are people who are suffering from an intolerable intolerable cold, something that is unthinkable, but it is happening. Many who have heating, 
but cannot turn it on because they can't afford it. And these were middle class to a certain extent, privileged to, to an extent, who live in urban areas in a good apartment, but are suffering cold because they can't afford the heating. Imagine those who have neither heating or apartments, or the option to switch it on, who live, who live between the cold of the bare soul and a tin roof. While this is happening, we cannot be so arrogant as to think that there is time. Time we do not have. We have to rescue our compatriots who suffer and bleed. We must accelerate the process of the crumbling down of this occupation government and must be ready that no one, no one must be ready and watch out that no one comes to the legislature with a pickaxe uh, um, or <laughs> Okay, so what I say is resist, insist, persist. <coughs> About the media, the media, uh, the media at the moment um, is lying. Uh, saying that this is a successful government that is just starting. No, no. This government is not starting. This government is already finished. Over. We have to finish this voluntary submission as a colony. When I heard that psycho... <laughs> talking about the present. When I heard that psycho answering, this is what happened. He was answering a worker who said, who came up and said to him, I can't make it to the end of the month. In other words, I can't make uh, ends meet. Uh, I can't make it to the end of the month. You know what this psycho said, who should be in a mental hospital? <laughs> he said, to this worker, if you couldn't make it to the end of the month, you wouldn't be here. You would be dead. That is what he said. This person should be in a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> so I'm going to say this to this schizophrenic. Watch out. Because many times, a person will not come asking for food. He would rather take vengeance to food. And he will ask for revenge. So I would suggest to you, the schizophrenic, to start, <laughs> to start closing that stage of his and start running away because there is here a people who may not eat, but have dignity. And you know, they are going to make it to the end of the month somehow, just to make you pay. I think this guy, he's very articulate. I'll, 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 you'll see him there. But um, I think he has to watch himself because... He's going right straight forward against the powers that be. So, what do you think? <laughs> well, he is direct. Anyway, okay. Thank you very much for listening again. Can I ask you to share it to other media networks and do what you can so that the channel grows and it gets to more people I appreciate it thank you so much leave actually uh, you know um, if you do not share perhaps you can make a comment because perhaps you can like it because 
the interaction is what counts okay if no one responds to anything they don't promote it if they see movement there that is when youtube promotes it whatever you know who i don't know how it works the logarithm whatever it is but i would appreciate if you help me out okay thank you so much bye bye